described as the mother of social casework and the author of Social Diagnosis in 1917, Mary Ellen Richmond constructed the foundations for the scientific methodology development of professional social work. In 1910, she systematically developed the content and methodology of diagnosis. Building on extensive research, she would go on to develop what she labeled social diagnosis. Through her approach, Mary Ellen Richmond Richmond was able to give social work clients a voice for the very first time. Her comprehensive instructions on how to gather information, interview methodologies, establish contact, and conduct in conversations, she gave social casework a strong professional status. She would go on to introduce the methodology of learning from cases in her second big publication, What is Social Casework? It was her goal to involve clients in the solving of their problems while still providing inspiration. My personal hero and role model, Jane Adams, graduated at the top of her class from Rockford Female Seminary in 1881. While in London with her friend Alan Gates Starr in, 19, in 1888, it was there that she found her true calling when they visited Toynbee Hall, a settlement house on the city's east end. She vowed to bring the settlement house to the United States, which was in the early years of escalating industrialization and immigration. It was in 1889 that Mary Adams and Ellen Gates Starr founded Hall House in Chicago's, Chicago's poor industrial west side, the first settlement house in the United States. It was their goal for educated women to share their knowledge from basic skills to arts and literature with the destitute people in the neighborhood. It's because of these heroic, inspiring, courageous women that I'm able to stand up here and talk to you today about community service living, learning. Why myself and countless others are able to go to school and have careers in the social service work and social work field and are able to spend our lives trying to make a difference in the world as well as in the lives of others. I recently graduated from the Mental Health and Addictions Program at Canada College, and for my last semester, I did my placement at Community Living North Bay, working with adults with developmental disabilities. I had the task of calling my care call companions every week to touch base and see how they're doing, to be an extra support system that they could rely on and look forward to every week. Many of them relied on programs and services where people would come out and spend time with them, play cards, take them shopping, cook together, go to movies. And when COVID hit, that all came to a stop after it went into lockdown, unfortunately, even for them. For many of these people, stability and consistency is crucial to their health and wellness. At first, I wasn't sure if this is something I want to do, but in order to graduate, I didn't have much of a choice. I always assumed that my placement would be somewhere in the community where I would learn and experience community service learning hands-on and not just talking to somebody over the phone about how their day was going and not really doing anything of value to anyone. That's not why I went into this field. I went in this field so I could help people, so I could take my challenges and experience and things that I had gone through in my own life and had to overcome myself with very little help and be that for someone else so they didn't have to go through it alone. So my very first care call was a very sweet young woman who was physically disabled and had a speech impediment. She was also French speaking and wanted someone who spoke French as well as English, but unfortunately no one in our class spoke French. She was the most soft-spoken, uplifting, happy woman I'd ever met. From that moment on, we became very close. It was very hard when we had to say goodbye that I would make a difference. I still wasn't sure, you know, I was, she had seemed so happy and had her mother, she had a great support system around her and I still couldn't see why me just calling people was gonna be of any value to them or to my community until a couple days later. And I had my next call, care call companion. And this gentleman, he was in his late 40s and was severely developmentally delayed due to a traumatic brain injury. He was very childlike in the way that he spoke. 
I immediately wanted so much to be of value to this precious human being. We spoke for over two hours that day. It was during that conversation that I realized how one little phone call to another human being could be so incredibly impactful. That one phone call every now and then to someone who didn't have much support, who just wanted a friend, how much value a phone call could have on another human being. In community service learning, we do a great deal of just that, learning. We learn from all kinds of wonderful new experiences and situations. We meet extraordinary, beautiful people. We have the opportunity to use our education and experience to give back to our community to make a difference in someone else's life. But we also experience the downside of it, which is meeting people we end up caring about and having to say goodbye when our time is up. It's amazing how far we've come over the centuries, over the decades, especially when it comes to technology. Our eyes have opened up wide to a world we didn't even know existed. We've seen and heard about starving children and families in poor countries, but we really didn't know quite the impact of it until people like Angelina Jolie started making videos and advocating for the millions of dying children and showing us the overwhelming devastation of it. We've seen and heard about people with disabilities, seen people in wheelchairs, but how many of you know about people with body dysmorphia, facial de deformities, people with brittle, bones, uh, brittle bones disorder? We've heard time and time again about people with depression and anxiety and addiction issues. People seem to be immune to the topic, or should I say numb to it. Talking about mental health has become as common as talking about the weather. People don't seem to care. At least that's how many people I've spoken to feel, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's because no one knows how to make it better. Again, thanks to technology, we are able to learn about statistics and the degree of violence and suffering that goes on in the world. Human rights and social justice are the philosophical underpinnings of social work. Social work practice is fundamentally anti-oppressive. Social workers, uh, we need to recognize that systematic oppressions do exist. We need to be a part of the change that society continues to disadvantage particular in individuals and groups. Whatever you decide to work on to help others, whether it's on a micro, meso, or macro level, you have the awesome opportunity of changing a life for the better. In the words of a great and honorable woman, our beautiful Mother Teresa, if you can't feed a thousand, a hundred people, then feed just one. The social work profession is personally taxing, a personally taxing one, but it is so worth it. We have the opportunity to show compassion and understanding for what people go through, the opportunity to propose short and long-term solutions and to communicate these to our clients, to help them learn how to create solutions to the situations in their life. It is not our job to fix them, but to meet them where they are and to be a sounding board for them. It is our job to advocate for them. As social workers and social service workers, we have the opportunity to play many different roles for our clients. An advocate, a strategist, a mediator, a facilitator, a spokesperson, a strategist, and more. We can help people develop their skills and their ability to, ability to use their own resources and those of the community to resolve problems. Social work is concerned with individual and personal problems, but it's also with broader, broader social issues such as poverty, unemployment, and domestic violence. Human rights and social justice are the philosophical underpinnings of social work practice. As participants in community service living, we have the extraordinary opportunity of taking our education and all that we have learned, taking our life's challenges and experiences, good and bad, combining those with the education experience we gain from working in the field and gaining a greater perspective of society's needs and issues and using all that knowledge and experience to be able to contribute to changing the world. Maybe not the whole world, but our little part of it. If everyone everywhere contributed just a little bit to their community, to their little part of the world, imagine what the world could really be like for our children, our future children, 
and their future children. Thank you.